Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is Daniel speaking in Daniel chapter 2. Thou, O king, verse 31, sawest and behold a great image, the great image whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. Translation of that is magnificent. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. His legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. And thou sawest till a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. And then was the iron, the clay, and the brass, the silver and gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of a summer threshing floor, of summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away that no man was, no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Verse 45, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain. It didn't say where it came from in the first part. It just said uh, there was a stone without hands. Now it says it was cut out of a mountain, praise God, without hands. That it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God which made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. The dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. Let me read you one more in St. Luke's Gospel. Praise God. Chapter 20. Amen. And verse 17. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone. The stone. That's what I'll preach on tonight, Brother Billy. The stone. The stone which the builders rejected. The same is become the head of the corner. Listen to this. And whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder. Amen. There's just two ways to approach this stone tonight. That's either fall on it, or it'll fall on you. Just two ways to go. Not very many choices. No other alternatives. Hallelujah. Daniel said, the interpretation thereof is sure. Hallelujah. The stone's been cut out of the mountain. Mm. Who is that stone? You know who it is. You know who it's talking about here. Amen. When it said that it's written, the stone which the builders rejected. Who was it they was rejecting? Huh? Who was it they was rejecting? Christ. Christ was who they was rejecting. Not Peter. Not Paul. Not John, not James. Amen. No, no, the stone. Amen. Oh, yes. Praise God. It was hewn out of the mountain without hands. 
no human instrumentality. Amen. Don't try to put your hands on it. Amen. It's dangerous. Don't try to say, it's mine. I've got it all. Amen. And nobody else can get it unless they come through me. That's dangerous. Amen. When men try to build a fence around something like a stone hewn out of the mountains, not made with hands. Amen. Oh, yes. You know what Nebuchadnezzar's trouble was? It was pride. One year later, he walked. Amen. Upon his roof after he saw that vision of the tree being cut down and nothing left but the stump. Amen. And seven times passed over it. One year later Belshazzar or Nebuchadnezzar amen was cut down like a big oak tree you know why because he said as he sported with his wife across the high roof walls amen of Babylon looking out over the things that he had built by the slavery and the sacrifice of hundreds of thousands of men and he said is not this great Babylon that I have built and then it hit him amen God was merciful to him But he reached out and got a hold of it and said, It's mine. I've done it. Amen. You haven't done anything unless God gave you the strength. You couldn't even tie your shoes in the morning unless God gave you the strength. Amen. And there's a whole bunch that can't tie their shoes. Amen. Because they run out of strength. They can't bend no more. Amen. Oh, God is the one that's given us strength. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar said like a whole lot of others did before him, it's ours. It's mine. Nimrod said it. Amen. But that stone was already rolling. Praise God. Hewn out of the mountain without hands. That relentless stone came rolling through Babylon. As they used to sing, I heard about the stone that was hewn out of the mountain. It was hewn out of the mountain. Amen. I heard about the stone that came rolling through Babylon as they looked for it. Tearing down the kingdoms of this world. They continued, have you saw the stone? Amen. As Brother Fred and Sister Ethel Hatfield walked through the congregation. Amen. That was hewn out of the mountain. That came rolling through Babylon. They looked and they looked. Have you saw the stone? And then Brother Fred wound his way back to the pulpit. And he said, I found the stone. That was hewn out of the mountain. That was hewn out of the mountain. I found the stone. That came rolling rolling through Babylon, tearing down the kingdoms of this world. It was already rolling. It rolled right over Nimrod and ground him to powder, crushed his kingdom, amen, and left it scattered to the four winds. Everybody is speaking a different language, amen, and it came rolling, rolling, rolling. It rolled over Babylon. Amen. It didn't stop at Jerusalem. It rolled over Jerusalem and left Jerusalem looking like a plowed field. You know why? Amen. Because the scribes and Pharisees, the priestly clan, amen, had said, it's ours. We've got it. Amen. And when the Lord came down, the Son of God came down to look about his vineyard, he said, let's kill him. If we can just get rid of him, we'll have it all to ourselves. Amen. Oh God, they didn't realize they was about to be ground to powder. That they would lose their existence. They would lose their place in posterity. They would lose their place. Their, their, their place would eventually become just a figment of history past. Amen. A few 
a few remnants here and a few remnants there. Amen. The dust of a summer threshing floor was picked up by the wind and blown into the whole world. The stone, the stone, the stone, the stone. You can't do wrong and get by. The stone's going to catch up with you. You can't run fast enough to outrun it. Amen. The stone's going to catch up with you. Hallelujah. The stone that the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Amen. Look out. It's not going to set there forever. It's not going to set docile and tame forever. Look out, it's getting up again. There's a rumbling going on. Amen, it's moving. Hey, it's moving. Praise God. When they signaled that Israel was a nation, that stone started moving again. Praise God. The church saw revival. Glory to God. I got in it. And a whole bunch more got in it. Glory to God. God was sweeping across the world, healing the sick, casting out devils. And the stone started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Tommy Hicks had the greatest crowds in South America. Amen. That they'd ever known the stone was a growing. Uh, amen. Some men got too big for the britches uh, and stuck out the hands uh, and tried to build a fence around it. And you got a whole bunch of denominations in Pentecost. Uh, and they say we got it. Uh, they're in competition with each other. But this stone won't amen uh, put up with any man's hand on it. It was cut out without hands. And it moves without denominational or organizational help. Amen. You know what? Most denominations and most organizations and most men that are self-centered and self-kingdom minded are doing, they're building their own kingdom. Amen. I'm not interested in the kingdom for myself. I don't want my name on anything. Glory to God. I don't want my hands on anything. Glory to God. It's a stone. The stone. The stone that matters. Let me fall upon it. Let me be broken. Let everything I have be broken. Praise God. Let me fall upon that stone. Let me get in it. Let me become a part of that rock. Amen. And I believe tonight if you're a part of the body of Christ, you're a part of that stone. If you're a part of the body of Christ and you got in in some revival, either lately or past, amen, you're a part of that growing stone. Stone. Amen. Because Daniel said that the God of heaven was setting up his kingdom. Amen. And in that kingdom, there's not going to be any end. Glory to God. I beheld, he said, till the ancient of days did set. Glory to God. And amen. That lamb, that that, that second person of the Godhead came to him and he gave him a kingdom that would not fade away. Glory to God. Time wouldn't dot it. Time wouldn't dent it. Time wouldn't crack it. Hallelujah. The stone, the stone, the stone fall upon it tonight lest it fall upon you. Amen. It's a terrible thing for the stone to fall on you. Some of you have been coal miners. And you know what a terrible thing it is. Amen. When there's a cave in. Amen. And the emergency sirens blows. And that's when families, wives, children, and mothers go to the mouth of the coal mine and wait for word as frantic men claw at rocks to try to save somebody. Amen. One man, even though he was very young, took the lead in a group that was trapped in a coal mine. Amen. They conserved their fuel their lamps, amen, 
and uh, they had to conserve their water because they didn't know how long it would take. They ran out of food and some of them munched on coal there in the coal mines. And then they shredded up their boots with their knives and made what they call coal miners spaghetti and ate their own shoes. Amen. Because they were so hungry. Amen. And finally somebody got through with a pipe. Amen. Somebody got them some water. Somebody got them a little something to eat. And a great praise went up in the camp. Prayers were answered. They were saved. At least for the most part. But some were like the miner that Grad Horton. Amen talk to about the Lord. Saw him in church just a few nights before. Amen. He worked a pair of small mules in a mine in Virginia. Amen. And there was a rock fall and he was caught in it. And the rock was so big it was laying on his body and he couldn't get out from under it. He begged and pleaded for somebody to help him. He begged and pleaded, please get me out. Please get me out. And then he began to talk to his mules. Please, nobody will help me. Why don't you help me? Amen. And he talked to his mules and he prayed to his mules and begged them to help him. Amen. Because he wanted to get out. He died that way. Nobody could get him out from under that big rock. How many hundreds of times has it happened? Men went in that black hole in the earth, amen, to dig out coal to make a living for their families. And then the roof caved in and somebody didn't come home from work that night. Amen. But that's just a rock fall in a coal mine. This stone is going to do more destruction than that. My God. Amen. The Bible said it came rolling through Babylon. And it ground that image, which was all the kingdoms of this world, into powder. And the wind picked up the powder and blew it away like the dust of a summer threshing floor. That stone did that. Men that have mocked God, that have laughed in the face of God, that have waved their pornography in the face of God. Amen. That have practiced their sins right in the house of God. Amen. In the guise of grace, they lived in disgrace. My God! The stone is rolling tonight. Amen. I want to fall upon it. It may break me. And it has. And it took away the things that I held dear in this world. Amen. But I know now that that was the thing to do. To fall upon that stone. And I want to tell you, before that stone starts rolling again, amen, and it's rolling, before that stone gets close to where you are, you need to fall on it. That's the only hope. It's your only chance. There are no others. The stone that the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Tell the Jehovah Witnesses there is no way but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Tell the Seventh day Adventist there is no escape from everlasting hell except through Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. My God, get it together once and for all tonight. Who do you think you're fooling when it grinds you to powder? You realize you wasn't fooling nobody but yourself. Amen. The stone takes away 
the kingdoms of this world and everybody in it. Amen. Except those that submit to that chief cornerstone. Amen. Jesus said in closing tonight, He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. Amen. Build your house on a rock. On a rock. On a rock. Build your house on the rock was his command. Amen. Tonight, build your house on a rock. Amen. Nothing in this world shall endure but that rock. He dig deep. He paid attention. Amen. He dig deep. He straightened himself out. He got a hold of himself. And he started digging in the right direction. Amen. And he dig deep. And he built on the rock. And the floods came. And the storm beat vehemently on it. But the house fell up because it was founded upon a rock. Fall on that rock tonight. But he that heareth not these sayings of thine and doeth them not, he man, him I liken to a foolish man that built his house on the sand. Building, building on the sand. Building houses that won't stand. Amen. Oh, then the floods came. The storm came. The wind blew and beat upon that house. One foundation went, then another. And the house fell, the Bible said, and great was the fall of it because it was not builded upon a rock. If you will fall upon that rock tonight, if I will fall upon that rock tonight, God will build me. He'll build you. But if you fail to fall upon that rock, the storm will diminish me. The storm will diminish you until there's nothing left. It'd have been better that you'd never lived than to waste all your time building on the sand. It'd been better that you'd never been born than to waste your life building on the sand. Do you really think, amen, Jesus would have laid in bed this morning and slept in instead of coming to the house of God? Huh? You better start building on the rock. Praise God. Amen. You really think that Jesus would have slept in this morning like most of the world did, sleeping over a Saturday night, hang over a Saturday night of party, and a whole lot of Christians did. They slept in with the world and the heathen and the hogs and the dogs and those that don't know that Sunday comes. Amen. And they refuse to put God first. How do I get on the stone? Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I'll guarantee you one thing. You may not do what I'm telling you, but you'll wish you had I'll be like the army that told those boys, those fresh recruits, amen, they had their hair cut, amen, like Daniel has back there, amen. They stood there with all their hair shaved off, 
that sergeant said, you may not do what we tell you to do, but if you don't, you'll wish you had. I won't tell you the guardhouse and the army is nothing to compare with this stone. Huh? You may not sell out to Jesus and give your time to Christ, amen, and be faithful to God the rest of your day, but you're going to wish you had. But if tonight you fall on this stone, you got a chance. Let him break you. Let him take you. Let him mold you. Let him shape you after his will. Stand with me, Father. Oh, God, the stones are rolling. Oh, Lord, the stones are rolling. And we don't have much time left. Help us to get on board to crawl in the crevice in this rock and find safety in the kingdom of Christ. I beg you, Father, in Jesus' name, in Christ's stead, for the glory of God. Lord, because we don't have much time left to work. Oh, God, help us to cry out while there's time, to seek God while we got a chance to be the best we can be for Jesus. Because tomorrow our alternatives will run out. Oh God, our chances to better ourselves and to change will run out. Help us to draw an eye to God tonight that he may draw an eye to us. Help us not to be like the religious men of bygone days that rejected him. Oh, they had religion. How they had religion. But they rejected him. Amen. Oh, Lord, help us not to reject him tonight, but to accept him. I beg you, Father. I beg you for these young people. I beg you for these dads and moms. I beg you for these precious souls that you placed in our trust. Just before we go to judgment, Lord, help us to give them one more chance to do better. One more call to get in the stone, lest the stone fall upon them. I pray in Jesus' name. As they say, we invite you to an altar of consecration, to an altar of salvation, to an altar of total commitment, to an altar of complete surrender. Come on! Let me Come to the rock of ages tonight.